Hello world, welcome to the 80th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Today's video is going to be a continuation from the previous video, so make sure you watch that video, a link will be in the description, first, as we're going to continue straight from there. So in that last video, we automatically downloaded the S&P 500 historical closing prices and the Russell 2000 historical prices, renamed them and moved them to um, our own folder, and finally we used matplotlib to graph it out so, that, so you can compare the S&P 500 to the Russell 2000. So that video has been doing great on my little channel. And I actually received some great feedback on Reddit from N1 or NL underscore underscore underscore. And he or she provided me some pretty good recommendations. And um, just in case they're watching this, I have not made those yet. So next time, maybe. In today's video, we're going to, again, automatically download the most recent um, S&P 500 and Russell 2000 um, historical closing prices from Yahoo Finance and we're also going to download the Treasury yield curve history from a website called Quandle which I'll show later and um, then we're going to move those files to our own data folder and rename them with today's date and then we're going to use matplotlib to do two graphs right a split graph one showing the S&P 500 on top of the Russell 2000 again and then also the S&P 500 on top of the yield curve and that's going to show us what happens to the S&P 500 when the yield curve goes below zero known as an inverted yield curve which is when the three month treasury yield has a higher interest than the 30-year treasury yield curve, right? That doesn't make any sense. The more, the longer you have a treasury, the more it should pay you. But in some cases, the yield curve goes inverted and we'll see that. So let's check it out first. What I'm going to do is show you my data folder, show you that there's nothing there. And then let's run this real quick. So it's going to open up a Chrome page. It's going to download the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, if you look at my lower left. And then from Quandle, it's going to download the Treasury Yield Curve. Okay. As you can see from the data folder, it's renamed those files to today's date. So we know which date we're working with. And then I am going to minimize my base. I'll leave a little bit on there for those who want to see me still. And so we have two separate graphs now, right? Well, it's a little too tight. I might need to uh, fix that. But basically, we have the Russell 2000 in blue on top of the S&P 500 in red, right? And we saw that in the last video. And this carrot GSPC, that's the index of the S&P 500. And then we also have the yield curve. So that's here, right? This axis right here, this Y axis, this orange line to show when it goes inverted. And you can see the impacts of the S&P 500. And there you go, two separate graphs or subplots on the matplotlib and you can uh, use the functionality just like in the last one so we can look at two different points and zoom in on that data zoom in again zoom in again right matplotlib does that for you automatically so I'm pretty excited about this I like data and graphs so let's go through, uh, make sure you watch the first video because we're going to jump straight into it. So first thing we do is we download these files. If you followed my first video exactly how I did it, if you run it the next day, you're going to get an error because I hard-coded the date. 
And so the way Yahoo Finance, if you look at these nine digit numbers, that's called an epoch date. Basically, I think it's the date in minutes or seconds, I'm not sure, from one January of 0000. So we need to pass the epoch date to get that from Yahoo Finance. So you're always getting the max data. Then we go to Quandle and we pull up this treasury yield curve. This is free. I've never heard of this site until recently and I'm super glad I did. But basically I go to this download here and I download it. I have my own API key because I registered for free. They have premiums account to get more data. So I uh, do the same thing I did in my previous video. I go to that site and uh, pass my API key as well that I store in a separate file. And so that, um, so I'm using Selenium to use the Chrome driver. Somebody said, hey, that can take up a lot of time. Why don't you um, import requests? So in a future video, I will show how to request the data directly from the site without opening up WebDriver and um, download it into whatever file we want. So we can download it and use the JSON information to get into a CSV or whatever we want. Then we move those files, right? And we named it the treasury yield curve plus today's date. Then we move the files from the source path to the destination path. I cover this in the last videos. Okay. Ignore that. Okay. Then I created a function called grid testing. So we'll declare today's date again because you need it throughout. The S&P 500 and the Russell 2000 we covered in my previous video. So then we go to this treasury yield curve, right? So I want the file path. So I called it the yield curve. I declare the file path so it knows which files. We're going to read that CSV file, right, using pandas. Then we want the date to be a date time. That way every single file that we're using is looking at the same kind of date. And we do that by passing it the data frame date and making it into a date time. We're going to sort the values by date and make it ascending true. So if I have 20 things of data, it's a good thing to do this to all of them. So if the date is looking different in each one, this makes it the same. Then what we do, and we're going to go to the data file real quick for those not familiar with the treasury yield curve. And so what this does is it passes this, the date, right? Pressing control down, you can go to the bottom and you can see we're missing some of the data, right? So possibly because they didn't issue one month and two month treasuries until a certain date. So what we're going to do, knowing that there's not one and two month data, we can check by pressing control down and going to the very last input. For most cases, there is to the end of this three months data. So that's the one we're going to choose. And uh, let's make my face big again. So what we're going to do, if you look in the code, is we're going to take, we're going to establish a new data frame, right? It doesn't change this. That's what that's the cool thing about pandas is that you're not changing the source data, right? You're just creating a data frame, a variable, and I'm calling it the difference of the 10 year minus the three month, right? And how we do that is we're going to minus this data frame, 10 year, minus this three month right here. And we're going to call that the difference of 10 years minus three months. Then we're going to pass it figure comma axis. In the previous video, it was just AX. In this one, it's AXS equals plot dot subplots. We're going to pass it two, And then I adjusted the figure size to take up the majority of my screen. So you can do four, but just know that you'll have to adjust the figure size to how you like it. 
So um, it can do two and two, two rows, two columns. You can adjust those. I chose to do a tight layout, and what that does is it gets rid of the margins. So let's just look at the, the chart one more time. And as you can see, there's absolutely more, no margins. And what I didn't notice is it, it cuts this off too. So I need to manually adjust this to a little uh, wider by changing the first variable to something bigger. Okay. Then this S&P 500 compared to Russell 2000 is similar to what we did in the first video. So what we do is we pass this start and end date. So they're both looking at the same data. Then this is the difference in this video. You create an axis of zero, right? So it's going to read that, but you're going to pass it the first, um, the first plot. So this is what I don't like about computer programming sometimes. And maybe I'm just a beginner and there's a reason for this. But here you declare two subplots. So your mind says the first subplot should be number one, the second subplot in number two. But computer programming starts with the zero width column. So you need to pass it axis zero to access the first plot. So I don't like that, but anyways. So first we're going to set underscore title. And I labeled that this, the S&P 500 symbol and the Russell 2000 symbol, which we declared here. Then we're going to plot it using the date, right, which is the bottom, the x axis, the close, which is the y axis. I want to make it red, and we're going to pass it the symbol, right, which we declared above. Then I want the legend to be in the lower right. Then we're going to create a twin axis, so a, a, basically a secondary y axis. Right, and we're going to call that secondary X2, and then we're going to pass it the Russell 2000 data. So day is your X axis, the close is the Y axis. It's I want to be I want it to be blue. I want the label to be the Russell 2000 symbol, and I want this to be in upper left. LOC is short for location. Then we do the exact same for this, but now we're going to pass it axis one, which is the second subplot, right? So it's still reading after this right here, but in the first, the top, if you will, is the zero width. Then we're in the first one, and then everything else is the same, right? We're going to pass it the new data frame that we created, which is the difference between the 10 year and minus the three month. I colored that green. The legend, so now you need to, we're creating a second twin, but we've already defined X2. So maybe that's a lesson learned for me on creating better variable names. So maybe, uh, you know, plot one underscore two, and then this could be plot two underscore two. But either way, that's not what I did. Then we're going to draw a horizontal line using the y axis which for us is the yield curve and i colored it orange so let's look what that looks like okay going back to this i did a orange line here if i did not label this axis 3 it will either plot the s p 500 which hasn't been to zero since the 20s or kind of never been at zero so just make sure that you uh, control which axis you want it to adjust to. And then since I'm using PyCharm and not a Jupyter notebook, notebook, you have to do plot.show. So it draws it. All right. So that's pretty much it. I am uh, super excited uh, about this, that it's all working. And so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. What I was trying to do, and the reason why I didn't publish a video on Tuesday, was because I was trying to have radio buttons where I can select the different secondary Y axis, and I can't figure it out. 
So like all good programmers, I uh, went to Stack Overflow and asked a question, and nobody's answered me yet. And so uh, for now, we're just going to do the two subplots. So this uh, previous video did extremely well. I'm hoping this one does well too. And despite the recent increase in my subscribers, around 62.3% of all my watch time and views come from uh, non-subscribers. So please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can see when I create new content. And like this video. Thanks. Goodbye, world.